very good morning. So I have great pleasure in welcoming all of you to this uh, session where we are going to demonstrate, you know, the classical method of knowledge creation. So we have with us really two great experts. I am here because I don't belong to their uh, <laughs> cabin. <laughs> and I will try my best to prevent them from, you know, confronting each other. <laughs> so we have uh, Dr. Narayanan Nambi. I mean, he's uh, blessed by the Ashwini Devas. He belongs to the Ashtavaidya tradition in Kerala. So he has a very big tradition behind him. And Dr. Vijit Shashitar is no lesser person. He has also studied from a great uh, Vaidya, you know, who was, I think, the last in the lineage of Acharyas who taught Ayurveda in the traditional way, face-to-face -face learning. So he has had that privilege of learning from a, a real master. So <clears throat> a few words of introduction before we get into the debate. The purpose of our discussion today is to show that the Ayurvedic process of knowledge creation was an open system. You know, it was an open system of knowledge creation. There were differences of opinion be between Acharyas. There were debates and discussions to come at consensus. And not only that, there was scope for discovery of new knowledge. So I will quote, we will all quote a few Sanskrit slokas once in a while. Don't worry if you don't understand them. Uh, that's just to add spice to the whole. <laughs> so one of the most celebrated uh, textbooks uh, of Ayurveda, the Ashtanga Hridayam, uh, Ashtanga Sangraha, which is a much more advanced version than this, there is a verse there which says, Disha naya shesha mapi sreya moheta buddhiman na shastra matra sharano na cha analo chidagama. I'm sure you understood it. <laughs> so, what the text says is that we are just giving you some guidelines. We are just, you know, giving you some pointers. Dishanaya, this is the direction which we are pointing out. The remaining thing, please find out by yourself. I mean, the <laughs> teachers had so much of uh, confidence in the students in those days. They thought that we had they have to just give some indications. Na shastra matra sereno, don't depend on the texts and never use the text without thinking critically about it. So you know, this is a very good guidance that the texts are given. And we had a lot of discussions about how Ayurveda should be adapted. And you know, it's our firm belief that the texts are already ready for adaptation. They were never fixed on anything. They said that here are the guidelines This can be applied to any time <coughs> and place. So there is another verse in the celebrated Charaka Samhita which says, Swabudhevam Sahasrani Koti Ruvabi Vikalpayet Bahudravya Vikalpatwad Yoga Sankhyana Vidyade. There are, you know, you can make hundreds and millions and billions of formulations by your own, you know, creativity. So don't just go by what is written in the text. In fact, I think the Ayurvedic texts are exceptional because these represent teachings which tell the student don't follow what we have told you. <laughs> So with this introduction, I would like to get started with our discussion today. And you know, the first point that we are going to discuss is, we are talking about honey, the nice, sweet, beautiful substance in this world. And that's why I think husbands call their wives uh, honey. <laughs> but you know, honey can also cause debates and problems. And that is why we are also debating about honey. So the first point that we are going to discuss about is honey one substance. Now we are really very doubtful because the first time I went to Russia, I was so dumbstruck by the types of honey that were displayed there. And I always thought there was only one honey. And I went back to the text and then I got a little bit more enlightened. So I would like to uh, begin with uh, Dr. Nambi. What is your opinion about honey? Is it one substance which means, or even if there are many substances, does it mean that all of them share the same properties? 
Thank you, Ramji. Let us start from Charaka Samhita. Charaka describes honey as four types. Makshigam, Brahmanam, Shaldram, Pautigam, Madhu Jadeha. So Madhu has, honey has four jadis. Makshiga, Brahmana, Shaudra, and Pautika. And out of which, the Makshigam is the best and Brahmanam is the worst. So what Charaka want to say is based on, of course, you may get many varieties in the world for maybe a, a, an approximate numeration. But he want to say what is the best and what is the worst. So in between thing, we can imagine all. Okay, so no, but I want a very clear answer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree that, I mean, what is your take on this question? Is honey one substance or are there very significant differences between different types of honey? Of course, honey has not a one substance. It is a, yeah. Honey is not a one substance because it's varied from place to place. And there are many possibilities to have different type of honey, it depends upon the bees, depends upon the plants, depends upon how it, there are many possibilities. This is, that is the reason why Charaga clearly explained four varieties of honey. And, but Charaga's view, the primary view of Charaga is very clear that what is best and what is worst. This is a very critical point to be known. Okay, be so which means that's because there's a difference. That there's a says difference. Some types of honey can be used, some cannot be used. Yeah. Now I would like to go to Dr. Vijit. You know, he is now representing Acharya Sushruta. It's another school of thought in Ayurveda. What is your viewpoint on this issue of whether honey is one substance or whether they are different? Namaste, everybody. Yes. So Sushruta also uh, explains about honey in the context of the Okay. Also explains honey in the context of a chapter called Dravadravya uh, Vidhi or Vidhanyam uh, where he introduces substances which are liquid. So first of all, it is one among the liquid substances that we use. But we know when it comes to your honeys, mm. we have some, it is almost like semi-solid now. But interestingly, <laughs> <sorry. Some honey. laughs> so somehow it is considered as a liquid substance and then among various liquid substances, he uh, called Madhu. Madhu is a Sanskrit word. Uh, it is a varga, it is a group of substances. So honey is not, as we all know, you know, as he describes uh, in detail about honey, he called it as uh, Madhu varga and Pushpa rasa is another terminology as he is using. The, which means it's the it's the essence, essence of, of the nectar of, flower. of the flowers. flowers. So, that's so that's very interesting because in Sushruta it's Madhu Varga. Varga means a group. So that itself clarifies that it's not one substance, wasn't it? It's very, yeah. So and it's it's also uh, specifically told by Sushruta. That's why I'm speaking to Sushruta. Uh, that it is Nana Dravya Rasa Guna Vidya Vipaka Virudhana Pushpa Rasana. It is not. Actually, probably you also know, like uh, monofloral honey and polyfloral honeys. So there are honeys which are, you have probably, we don't have that uh, monofloral mono thing, where honey is only from one flower. You have dandelion or lavender or different types of honeys, whereas the honey is because you, I think after winter, you have the luxury of uh, spring with nothing, no flower, and slowly each flower comes up and then the bees collect from each flower. Whereas in India, we don't, at least the part where we are from, we don't have that uh, luxury of uh, complete winter and the spring. So the, that's why Susuda says it's Nana Dravya, from multiple plants, from many plants, which has different rasa, different guna, different virya, vipaka, the makshika, the bees go and collect this pushpa rasa. So it's very clear that it is not at all a single, even a single honey, that's the point. The single honey itself is not a single substance. It's a very complex. And the point is Nana Dravya Rasaguna Vidya Viruddhanam Pushparasanam. It is, it's already incompatible. No? You know the word Viruddha. So honey is a substance which is already Viruddha by itself, which is 
collected by Makshika, Mr. B, which even can be Visha. It itself can be a toxic B. So already, uh, Susuda so, so puts you under a threat. Be careful. Because it's collected by a toxic person. And it's collected from many sources and put into his coop for a specific purpose. And we are trying to abuse this, but be careful. So it's even a single honey is not a single substance. And definitely, honey uh, is a varga. And uh, as uh, Professor Nambi was mentioning, uh, Susuda, when Charaka says there is, a, he, he belongs to Charaka school and uh, I belong to Susuda school. I stand a little bit away. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't worry, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> so when Charaka uh, speaks about uh, four types of honey, which is, he has explained, which is uh, Makshika, Brahmana, Chaudra, and Pautika. This is based on the bees that collect. So there are uh, four types of bees. And I know that in, in uh, snowing countries, there's only one species, main species of honey which can survive in the snowing areas. But I think uh, according to the new data, there are main seven species, and sub including subspecies, there are around 44 subspecies of bees which can collect honey. So, but according to uh, both Susuda and Charaka, I agree the number of bees, but Susuda adds four more, which is Chatra, which is based on the shape of the honeycomb, and uh, uh, Arkhya. Arkhya is uh, specific to a source, which is collected from Madhuka Indica. Which is a so this is the only monofloral only honey described in Ayurveda. And probably it was also uh, artificially created, it's not bees. Even now they, we have the practice of producing this honey and also a sweetener. Uh, you co collect this flowers and press it and make this honey. And uh, Uddalaka, which is uh, another uh, honey, which is very interestingly where the honeycomb is made in the white and hill. White and hill. White and hill. What, what, what do you say in German for white and hill? Ameisenhaufen. Correct. What me <laughs> You're right. Please say again. Ameisenhaufen. Ameisenhaufen. Haufen. Haufen. That's it. And the next uh, uh, is Dala. Dala means, uh, Dala is quite controversial. The word is controversial. Some people have the word, it's from the word Dala. Dala means a petal. So, Petal, it also means it's directly from a flower or a mixture of flowers or the petals. But uh, the strong opinion is that Dala is a type of honey where the honeycomb is made in the trunk of a tree. Yeah, there will be a hole in the trunk of the tree. And that's you collect. So, again, it's very interesting. It's Ashtamo Mathu Jadaya. The word used is Jadi. It's a very uh, non word in India. Jadi means a caste or a class. Category. Yeah. So these eight are not individual honeys. It's not a substance. It's again subgroups. So there are eight subgroups of honey. It's not again eight substances. So according to species of the bee, bees. So jadi, the word jadi means ja iti, how something is born, how something is formed. So according to the formation of the honey, taking all the criteria in the process of formation of honey, there are eight types. Or probably we get four factors from this description. One is, whenever a honey comes to you, we have to ask four questions to you, yourself, of the, or the person who gives honey to you. Which is the species of bees, is the first question. Second thing is, what is the shape? Because it's standardized now. Because the honey makers, it's not wild. If it's wild, it's well and good. Actually, even the shape of the honeycomb, I know this is flat and in a plate when it's cult cultivated, whereas it has various shapes. And the shape of the honeycomb also influences the honey. The third factor is, of course, the flowers from which the honey is collected. And the fourth factor is where is the honeycomb seated? 
of okay. this situation. That's but, quite fascinating. But you know, I, disagree. I, I would like to say something more. <laughs> <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> because, <laughs> because Nana Drivat Devyatmaga Twaja Yoga Wahi Param Matu. So Matu is a yoga wahi. So if you say it has different dressa, it has different media, it has different vibhaga, how can we study something? So we we want to know something, commonality should be there, some samanya, some commonality should be there, then there may be something else. But the fundamental thing for is Nana Dribyatmatwe be that yoga wahi could be highlighted about the hand. So can you please explain? Does everybody know what is yoga wahi? No. So can okay. you say a few So there are uh, you know, there are different trivias having specific uh, rasa, guna, vidya, vipaka, the fundamental things of the trivia. But some trivia having a yogavahi character means it carry another trivia together and it helps that trivia to diffuse in different part of thing without losing its own original entity. Oh, maybe, uh, in maybe, a, uh, maybe in a better way you, you put it in <laughs> <back. laughs> You know, what I think what he means by yoga vahi is yoga means to combine yeah. and vahi means to carry. Yeah. Yeah. So when the honey is combined with any other substance, it carries the properties of that other substance. Absolutely. You know, without uh, disturbing it. So that is a very, in spite, so that's a very good point. I mean, uh, Dr. Uh, Vijit gave a very fascinating, you know, uh, explanation from Sushruta. And they had kind of thought about all possibilities about honey. I mean, this is quite fascinating. That all possible classifications in principle were understood by Sushruta. But Vijit highlighted the point that honey is, uh, you know, very heterogeneous. Even a single honey is uh, kind of a mix of many substances. And that's where uh, Nambi was pointing out that in spite of that heterogeneity, honey has this beautiful property of yoga vahitra. It Because of so many opposing factors, honey is neutral. You know, unless you are neutral, you cannot handle opposing things, like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a yoga vahitra here, it's a good example. I also, I also. <laughs> <laughs> I am also having a property. I agree with Dr. Professor Dabbi that Kali <laughs> is yoga wahi definitely. <laughs> no, so I think uh, this is one round of our discussion. You know, there are some things that uh, they agree with each other. I think what we got from this first round of discussion is that honey is not one substance. It is different of different types. And the criteria on the basis of which we classify honey was also highlighted. And, but in spite of that variability, this beautiful property of yoga vahitu, honey just blends with whatever substance you put into it. And that's why it becomes therapeutically so effective. So there are two questions. We can, very short. yeah, very short, yes. Yes. Um, so all honey, text, all honey types have this uh, yoga vahi characteristic. All. Yes. Uh, so, by the reference, you want to speak? <laughs> by, by the reference, it is because of the union of substances, pushparasas, the nectar from different flowers. Because of that, honey gains yogavahi property. That means monofloral honey will not have yogavahi property, whereas polyfloral honey will have yogavahi property. Because it is, no, actually, if you look into, there are, there are three vadas when you understand uh, a property of a substance or action of a substance. There is a dravya samanya vada, there is a guna samanya vada, and there is a karma samanya vada. And we all are representing each of it. We will fight. If you ask what is, what works, we will fight on this floor. Because <laughs> we have different sort of opinions. And I belong to a school who believes of karma vada, right? I believe, my school believes that karma is superior than dravya and guna. But they, my, they will disagree, I know it. So, I can quote many, many of contexts in the text to prove that honey, uh, or karma, or how a substance is made will overpower 
the substance with that substance is made and also the property of the substance you understand so the substance here it's a very good example it is the process of honey making which contributes to the uh, property you have yoga vartha okay so just to clear the confusion i believe in all the three yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are guna karma and according to context would they emphasize on a particular vartha now the, yeah. so the answer is that you know all honeys may not have yoga vartha that answers your question next yeah i would like to add that uh, uh, the uh, basic swarupa of madhu is uh, <coughs> yoga vahi is not important not only important yes it is important but it is swarupena jivayati is important because madhu is one of the substances which are advised to be taken every day shilayet sada sacha and the uh, jivayati part i uh, a little bit back to differ with uh, Uh, Vijay, that uh, it is visha. It is a complicated substance, but its basic property is to jiva yati. Okay. So we will come back to it because we are going to discuss about the vishakta of honey. And there is just one more question at the end of this round, or a comment. There is a bit of contradiction in your own arguments. On one hand, <laughs> you are saying it has multiple virias and gunas, and therefore it is a potential toxin. And then uh, Charaka is saying it's a yoga vahi, of course, should also. But your argument, and you are saying it's a yoga vahi. So, what's the difference between a substance being inert and a substance which has the ability to blend and therefore it has more synergistic activity? How can an inert neutral substance carry anything? Yes, would you like to answer first, and Maybe. then I will. Yeah, you answer it later because we have to continue the book. Okay. Yes, I think uh, this uh, it's a very very interesting question. If you we will, I think the answer will come as we proceed with our discussion. But the fact is that honey exerts its own action. Also, it's not a very neutral, you know, carrier. But the thing is, it it also has the ability. to facilitate the action of substances in which it with which it is combined as you will see right now that we are going to talk about the samanya gunas of honey is there something called as a common property of all types of honey because in ayurveda we have we are using honey not just as an inert vehicle but it is as you remember the best medicine for kapha you know it has its own identity and individuality so how when it preserves its own identity and individuality it still becomes a vehicle for other substances is what will unfold as our discussion moves forward but thank you for that very interesting question so i think now we must go forward i want to know uh, from both of you how different are the different types of honey so we will start with vijit now you know is honey hot or cold or are some honey is hot or some honey is cold <laughs> yes I think uh, that's another uh, hot topic, especially when it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to the West, because almost all Western students of me taught me that honey is hot. And uh, now on, I would like request you to be really very brief, Time on, okay. yes, because we have to discuss many things. Yes. yes. So, uh, and if you consider the samanya guna, of course, we even probably need to think what is samanya guna, what is the common samanya guna literally means the common properties according to sushruta honey is cold by uh, potency but he no, explains no but i am asking you the question is there any type of honey which is hot yes there are types of honeys which are hot <laughs> <laughs> which, which is uh, pautika which is uh, highly intoxicating and toxic honey it's a, it's especially told it's visha 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 madakrut if you take it Yeah, the i think the example is the uh, huge himalayan bees bee honeys which is uh, apis dorsa dorsa i think is a species if you drink the honey even in small quantity you will feel high you will get intoxicated mm -hmm. and there's a toxic dose even you, you you will die if you drink a dose of that honey so that's an answer to your question is this your opinion or no, no. it's a susurda opinion it's a visha <laughs> and it is it is a honey which uh, is vidahi it will if you take that honey it will induce vidaha inflammation in fire it will produce acid reflux or uh, gastric inflammation and acidity and things like that and it's a it's it's a honey which can induce rakta pitta bleeding that's how you will die it will induce okay 
So thank you. So we got the point that all honeys are not the same. So there are some honeys which are hot and really hot because they can make you bleed. Shushudan Vagbada has a different opinion. Shushudan Vagbada very clearly says that it is Madhura and Kashaya Rasa. It is Shira and Vidya. Guru and Ruksha. So based on that, it is there is also, uh, based on this guna, this vata krit, it increases vata and kapha pitta krit. Kapha, it reduces kapha and pitta. Oh, so we have a problem here. You don't agree that there cannot be any honey with this water? No. According to Charaka, it's not. It's not. <laughs> okay, so I think we will then come to this important question of... Because that ushnatva happens because of the yoga vahitva, as he rightly mentions. Basically, Ushna Mathu is Shita, just because of Yoga Vahitu, as he rightly, he himself given clue to us that from Himalayas, the flowers and everything, the material that honey, that bee collects, having such a Tikshna, Ushna, this type of thing, maybe having a Yoga Vahitu along with honey, creating misinterpretation, misunderstanding that it is Ushna. Classically, it is Shita. Like Ushna Jalavat, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that. But now the question here is that, you know, what we have discussed so far is that honey is not one substance. There are so many varieties based on the species, based on the honeycomb, based on where it is uh, the honeycomb is, uh, you know, made, and also the flowers. But there are differences in the properties of honeys, although the two schools may not agree with the radical differences in terms of the virya. They do agree that there are differences. So that comes to the question. When we say honey in Ayurveda, like when the text says you use honey here, what type of honey is intended? Can we use any type of honey like the ones that we have here? Uh, you know, and say I'm using the Shastra, I'm using this honey. Because honey you will find everywhere in the world different types of honey. So what is your opinion now? Which type of honey should be used according to our Shastras? Charaka clearly mentioned is Makshika should be used. Pravaram Matanta Sushrut. Yeah, actually there's no controversy between us in this topic. <laughs> actually, uh, uh, Sushrut also agrees that among the eight types of honey, Makshika is superior. But we will find that in specific indications of honey, they will use the specific word. In certain specific contexts, they are speaking about usage of Chautra. In specific uh, areas, they will use the word Makshika. So actually, where are, this is another a problem of translation. You will find the translation honey always, uh, always but actually that is not the advice. The word really matter. Wherever they use, ask you to use Makshika, you have to use the Makshika type of honey. And Makshika is the Sukshmadara, it's a, the most, we call it as uh, subtle honey because the bees are as small as mosquitoes, even maybe smaller than mosquitoes, sometimes even you cannot see them. You only hear the mm, sound only you can hear. So, <laughs> Makshika is that. <laughs> Very graphic explanation. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot see because they are so small. And when a bee is small, <laughs> When a bee, honey bee is small, the, man, the thing is it can go and collect honey from the smallest, even the unseen, you know, the flowers even which cannot be seen, right? So that, uh, uh, flowers, so that makes it more lakhu. Whereas, uh, so Chaudra, uh, Chaudra and Makshika, which are uh, collected by the smaller species of uh, bees, is advised. And when it comes to the matter whether uh, the honeys you have or we have it here or you have it in your homes, whether can we use it for medicinal purposes is a big question. Whether especially the honey the doctor, my mentor is holding, I think this is a very dangerous honey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, very sweet. Shweda, it's called Brahmanam Shweda Varnam Sia. I'm just quoting. Thank you. Sometimes they have to do that. Charaka says 
this the the Brahmara. This is Brahmara, I think. You probably you can also check and say whether it is Brahmara. Because the honey which is white, which is Ati Pichila, excessively sticky. Very sticky. <laughs> Ati Guru, excessively heavy. heavy. You can taste it. Because yeah. uh, there is no Kashaya Rasa in this. And Ati Mathura. Ati Mathura. Excessively. It's the processed honey, that's not how the bees have produced it. It's all creamed and heated. You know, that we will come to that. Processing is, processing, processing is another thing. We processing will, is another thing. Is Actually, all honey is processed. We will come to that. But uh, honey cannot be used without processing, even classical. Yeah, it is. It is told. So, pakkum. Amam, amam honey. The amam. unprocessed honey is called ama. Yeah, ama amlam tadosha krut. Ama is uncooked or raw. Is amla. It can get fermented because it has high water content in it, and it is tadosha krut. It will induce tridosha imbalance. So. This is better actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it is processed. Yeah. So it's not so bad. Enormously <laughs> better. Yes. Probably this is the reason why Charaka mentioned it as guru, not lagu. Uh, if a fresh honey could be guru, have different intention to say guru. One, it is very difficult to digest because of its presence of amatua, presence of some amatua within inside. So there are different possibilities. You can make it laku because Samhita gives some clues to make it laku. One is keep it for a long time, like a one year old honey become from guru to laku. Or you may undergo, you make the honey under different processing. Anybody wants to check and tell. What we want you to tell us is, can you feel any kashaya rasa or is it only sweet? Kashaya means astringent. You can actually feel the astringency in your mouth. Is it only sweet or can you feel other tastes? Tiny and really slight the area. but it's predominantly sweet. Uh, Which because you're asking for kashaya. No. <laughs> <laughs> of how, you know, out of four, out of four, Vijay, uh, how much, how, how much sweet it is? If, if maximum hundred percent of this sweet is four, or out of ten, how, how much sweet, sweet it is? Ten. I think it's about eight point five sweet. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this clearly demonstrates, you know, uh, the I, the classical honey that Ayurveda. Uh, recommends will definitely have very perceptible kashaya rasa, mm -hmm. which is why it is said to be kapha uh, so, so does this mean this can increase kapha? Yes. So that's at, it, at least it is na slashma haram. It doesn't decrease kapha. kapha. And samam is also told. It might keep it as how it is. It will not it neither increases or it decreases. But it that cannot reduce, it cannot be the best medicine for cup. Definitely. So you have to That's be important careful. Thing. Also, I think when it comes to uh, medicinal use, the Navam honey, as Dr. Nambi was uh, mentioning, the new honey, newly produced honey, is Brahmana, who is nourishing. Whereas uh, the Purana, which is, uh, yeah, which is kept for more than one year, becomes Lakhu and Lekhana. Okay. So now, we need to go to this important concept of what are the samanya gunas of the honey that we recommend for medicinal use. Oh, Ram, I, I'm so sorry I still have, because you wrote this question about our honeys which we should use and there's one question burning in my mind. We have a big differentiation between forest honey and flowers yeah, honey we in have, Germany. We have flower forest honey here. Yeah. And there is a difference, as to my knowledge, that the bee is not going to the flowers in the forest, but it is going to some lice kind of animal, which produces a very sweet kind of drop, and the bee so takes it and puts uh, her enzymes in it. So it's two animals which the honey goes through. And personally, I feel that is the honey we should use here, because it is, it is uh, very kashaya, and it's also little tikta. Yeah. So that's what we wanted to come to the end. Oh. What <laughs> <I think. laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So you are you have taken us into the future. <laughs>
Okay, so what are the Samanya Gunas? But some of the Gunas which Elmer mentioned, I think I believe are part of the Samanya Gunas of honey. Yes, yeah. So again, I think there is a disagreement in some areas, but the common areas will be, uh, it's Madhurasa, Kashaya Anurasa. It is Shita, it is Shita. <laughs> it is Laghu. It is not Guru. Uh, honey is Laghu. And it is Pichila. It is having a special property called Saukumar, Sukumar, which is, I think, it's the word is not used for many other substance. Sukumar, it is tender. Okay. It's very tender, a tender substance. You have to be careful with tender things. And it is sukshma. It's also having a special property of sukshma. It, it can go into sukshma marga anusari. It can enter into any subtle channel. So probably it will cross all barriers, blood brain barriers and all these kinds of barriers in the body and reach any targets. Uh, so I think these are the main properties, if you agree. Do you agree? I disagree with him. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, when you say Samanya Guna of Dravya, you have to say in the right place when it is collected. For example, honey is, if honey is there, when the, the immediately when we collect honey, it is Guru, not Laku. Then it may undergo different uh, possibilities through which it, may, it can become Laku. When you keep it for over one year, it can become laku. Or if it uh, make it some processing of the honey, it can be laku. But in a, as an original source, honey is guru, as rightly mentioned by Charaka. One. Second thing is, there is also a mention of ruksha, which he, uh, which a little bit missed. So it's an important point, which <laughs> creates uh, ruksha. Yes. And originally, originally it is not the dosha shamanatva. It has vata krit, it has a strong potency to increase vata and reduce kapha pitta. But all, with the help of different process, with the help of other possibilities, it can become tridosha krit, the, reducing tridosha. But, and also it is, it is also katu vipaka. It is not really clearly mentioned, somewhere indirectly mentioned it is in the vipaka, it is katu. And it is shita by origin. Okay, so, I have you know, we have come, what about Agni? No, I, have, uh, I have to disagree first. Okay, now, uh, uh, it is, uh, I have may I disagree with him before that? Okay, please, please go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think that honey is guru, just any honey is guru or heavy at the time of uh, collection. It depends on, again, which bees are collecting it. As I, have, I was trying to mention that, the smaller the bees, the lighter the honey is. So, Brahmanam, if you have heavy obese honeys, <laughs> honey bees, <laughs> honey bees yeah. Yeah, obese honey bees collecting uh, the uh, honey, then it can, only, it can only collect it from bigger, bigger flowers, and also it contributes its own properties, because it's honey when it comes to comb, it's also mixed with its own saliva and its own biological material. So that makes it heavy. So I strongly, I, I believe that, uh, I want to mention that especially Makshika and Chaudra can be Laku and it is Deepana. It is Deepana, it can, it's, it's not Pajana, but it can increase Agni, the substances. So whether it is Vayavya, or so this, you know, a substance becomes subtle and subtle, it have the tendency for more Air, air in it, or air element in it. You want to say sukshma, Not only sukshma, it's, it becomes uh, vatakrit slightly. It can, so Sushruta doesn't say it is vatakrit, but he also doesn't, it, it, the, the word tridosha samanam is mentioned, but he starts by saying pitta sleshma meda meha krimi visha ghanam. And tridosha samanam cha. But that doesn't mean that it will subside water. I don't believe that honey will subside water. Tridosha samanam means in a condition where pitta kabha is predominant and vata is just assisting that condition. Or vata is not just normal, it's because of probably because of the blockage produced by kabha and pitta excessive in the srotosis, vata is challenged. 
In that combination of dosha, you might use honey. But in a condition where excessive dryness, excessive uh, chalatva, excessive uh, other properties of uh, vata is there, or vata predominant condition, chaudra and makshika cannot be used. And of course, it is according to me, it is definitely. Again, according to me means according to Sushruta and according to my experience also, small varieties of honey, which is produced by mm, like this. <laughs> 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 but, uh, they are highly deep enough. And, uh, but these kinds of honeys, I believe, will produce Agnimandya. We have to be careful. I agree with Charaka in that case. You have to be careful with the dosage of honey when it comes to Bhavana. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, what we need to do <laughs> here is that, you know, we... One, one more point I would like to yeah, and then I would like this. to get to the next point of our discussion. Because, because you see, a substance having Mathura Rasa and Kashayana Rasa. So Mathura Rasa is built upon Prathvi, Chmambu, Vikshamrita, so Prathvi and Atmahabhuta. So think about Prathvi and Atmahabhuta, then Guru or Lekhu. So there is a understanding in Shastra of Vijitra Pratyarabdha. Means if you have Madhura, Madhura Rasa, Shida Vidya, Snigdha, Guru, etc. Have a continuity in this, have a different type of action. Where something that which is having Madhura Rasa but is Kadu Vipaka. Madhura Rasa with the, instead of, instead of uh, Shida Vidya, it is Ushna Vidya. Then there are these Vijitra Pratyarabdha is a unique nature of different material that can really do miracles in the system. Okay. No, so now let us come to some conclusions about the discussion that happened so far. That honey is not one substance. They are different. And there can be varied differences in properties. So much so that our ancient Acharyas couldn't even agree so much on the common properties of honey. Because there was so much of variety and they were referring to different types when they even mentioned the common property. So that is a word of caution. That the solution that is in front of us is examine what honey you have in front of you in terms of all the properties. What Ayurveda has given you are clear parameters on the basis of which you can choose the best honey for medicinal purposes. So it's very, some of the controversies are difficult to resolve because we cannot get into the minds of Charaka and Sushruta who, you know, voiced these opinions many centuries ago. But what is very clear here is that they are aware of the... <laughs> so they are aware of the varieties of honey. And so the takeaway message here is that the Samanya Gunas, which they have described, are the desirable properties in the honey which you must use for medicinal purposes. So that becomes a guideline for us. And we can use, see whatever honey is in, available for us today we can uh, match it with these Samanya Gunas and then we can use it. So now we go to the next important uh, point of our discussion is, can honey be cooked or heated? <laughs> what are the ways in which honey should be processed? Dr. Vijay, I mean, raised a very interesting uh, <coughs> ish question when he talked about, you know, these are all processed honeys. And if you look at it in Ayurveda, Ayurveda never recommends use of unprocessed honey. You know, ama honey is, ama madhu is causing madhu ama, which is a very dangerous condition. So then we are not against processing. But how can we process honey? This is the question. So what about heating honey? Originally, Charaka says that ushna mushna artha mushna echa. Don't make it hot. Don't mix honey with hot things. So there are so many contradictory, I mean, so many things that is having either Ushna in nature or Ushna Vidya things, you cannot combine together because it, it guna as a Vijitra Pratyarabdha, as a Yoga Vahi, it is changing. What is very important is that when you look at the gunas of honey and look at the gunas of Visha, there are some gunas are very similar, that is Ruksha, Ushna, etc. Laku also it when it change into different paka if it attach with a tikshna guna and having a characteristic of yoga vahi it can make lot of problems. So 
text very clearly says you ought to be very cautious when you mix something with honey as per tarika. So, but our question is on heating specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Sushruta directly says that pakkum uh, when cooked, honey is will subside tridoshas. When ama amlam tridoshakrit, when it is uncooked, it is it can become sour and it will balance tridoshas. So definitely, even in later books called Yogarakmagara, you can see a method, matupaka vidhi, a method to process honey. How to process honey? Probably, if there are people who no, uh, because I know that all the honeys are boiled to take out the water content and also, so there are different methods how they do it. I know I have, I personally collect honey from tribes, uh, from the forest department. So they collect honey and they keep it in a steel uh, chamber, which is kept in a water bath, which is almost in 40 degrees Celsius. And the honey start frothing, you know, after a few, couple of minutes, honey start frothing and that frothing process will bring both physical impurities and probably also toxic substances which are more tikshna, ushna will come up which is scooped off and it will also take off the water content. So that is the method of uh, traditionally preserving honey by somebody but Acharya, uh, in Yogarat Nagara they say you have to add milk almost one eighth part of honey, you have to add milk and you have to add small portions of Haridra, which is turmeric and Abhaya, which is Haritaki in, as Churna into it and you have to stir and in slow fire, you have to cook it until the whole water content or the milk portion is gone and the only honey remains. And this is considered as superiorly processed honey. So now the question is, in Ayurveda, we have always mentioned that honey should not be heated, you know, and honey should not be used with hot substances. Now, what are you saying here? You are saying that honey should be cooked. So is there anything care that we need to take when cooking? Yeah, because, so, uh, yeah. so that definitely, the, even as uh, Dr. Nambi was saying, it's told it should not be heated. Ushnam, Ushnarte, Ushne, Ushne Saha. So it should not be, yeah, it should not be mixed with hot things, it should not be heated. It, so these references are speaking about already processed end product of honey. So there's a common rule, even not only for honey, for any substance which is already cooked. And Pudarushni Garana, reheating a pakwa of a pakwa substance which has come to the state of cooking, let it be oil which we make for various purposes, even food which has uh, come to the saturation of cooking, it is not supposed to be reheated, especially a substance uh, which has visha uh, anvayatva, toxic substances, which is tender by its character, which has complex substances in it, when heated can turn toxic. Okay. Yes, so now this is very interesting. Uh, I've also seen, you know, traditional physicians uh, processing honey in the sun, not in the fire. And they put a little bit of turmeric, I mean, uh, pepper into it and then keep it in the sun and slowly, you know, all that scum will come on top and they remove it and then they say this is useful. So this is the most fascinating thing. Honey has been heated in the Ayurvedic tradition. And this conception that it should never be heated uh, is not fully true. Because the first time honey is collected, it needs to be processed. But the heat that should be applied has to be very at a very low degree. This is the key point. That you should never boil honey. You can go maybe to 40 degrees at maximum to 60 degrees, but not more than that. And that is why uh, some uh, people keep it in the sun instead of on fire because that heat is more controlled and regulated. And I would like to say there were two other points that really came up from this discussion is that, you know, uh, yes, it's, it's not that honey is, uh, you know, very similar to other substances. Nothing can be reheated. 
but honey becomes even more dangerous when it is reheated because you know honey has the sheetha we a few gunas in honey controls its vishatva visha means ushna ruksha tikshna lakhu these properties if a substance has it works like a poison but honey has those properties but additionally it has some other properties which checks its vishatva like pichila sheetha and uh, probably this is the reason why in the vasti and in the vamana period where we make a slight alteration in the honey because it that advantages of gunas of visha can be utilized as a therapeutic synergetic energy to things to push things to out tikshna guna tikshna so when honey is heated it suddenly becomes ushna ruksha lakhu up to that it's okay the moment the substance gets tikshna guna it begins to work like wish so that care has to be taken which is why once you process it there is a one time allowance for honey to be cooked in mild fire but after that we are not supposed to heat it once it's processed so this honey should not be heated anymore now is does this make any sense i put some honey inside i cannot see it it's at the bottom so digit is uh, very expert in putting honey into water pots <laughs> 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 this is so yesi atapadane shakti hi tasi guru that which goes and go down is called guru in okay yes yes that is guru i have to i don't is the kind of so both the honeys are going down yes but is there a honey which will float yes yes Yeah so I see the test both the honeys have gone down yeah. and uh, Nambi is very happy <laughs> <laughs> because this is Charaka's views but I'm asking which is is there a honey that can float when you put it in yeah. water yeah, 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 professor can you hold it <laughs> it it's, it's probably something you know we we use uh, this test for two things to understand the purity of the honey because that's a big issue in India somehow when you get honey to see whether it is honey itself so you put it in water so you can see how fast it goes it's not leaving me <laughs> it's okay see it's tuck it's gone tuck yeah graphic effect <laughs> <laughs> where is this is tuck not tuck <laughs> in the same water same it's okay <laughs> oops so, see how it goes see the Slowly. Yeah, one is not willing to go inside. You have to push it. The other <laughs> just jumps into the water. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, there is one question: Is uh, the guru and uh, is it uh, for majjana only, or it is related to agni? Oh. It is always related. No, it's all related on to the agni, right? The bhavdi ka tatwa, the elemental composition is what makes something difficult to digest. It's the same elemental composition which makes something brahmana. it's the same elemental composition which makes something physically float so we are checking the uh, the relative relative heaviness of substance of course so you may be surprised there there are honey there's a there's the makshiga type of honey collect especially collected from the forest when you pour it like this will take some time to go down and still some part of the honey will float some part of the honey will float and it slowly stays and think whether i have to go down or not and ta 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 it goes down like that so this is a very important uh, you know test with which you can decide to some extent what honey whether the honey that is in front of you is of medicinal property or you know just for fun <laughs> yeah probably we can say whether it is food or, or medicine, or medicine. Mm -hmm. so the guru one the new one the guru one which doesn't have the pitta rakta uh, imbalancing thing can be used as a food uh, but not in excessive quantity but the honey which is wild which is dark uh, which is less viscous uh, can be used as a kapagna kapavitta hara staulya hara obesity reducing fat reducing substance but not this honey not this honey also make uh, you fatter <laughs> yeah all <laughs> this i should not eat it anyway Maharaj, uh, we, use, we use one more test it uh, we put it on the cloth 
and it, from cloth also it dribbles down. It doesn't stick to the cloth. That is an important property mm -hmm. that we consider in mind. Thank you. Yes. So um, now we are coming to the end point, of this. One, one point. <laughs> so <laughs> it is very important to understand honey into perspective as a food as a medicine. When something when we use as food, most probably it could be tridosha hara. That's one thing. If whatever the type of honey, so you have to be chosen, but it should be tridosha hara. If not, convert into tridosha hara. One. Second thing, if it is a medicinal purposes, you have to be very careful because it, whether it is kapha, vata increasing, normally it is vata, kara and pitta kapha reducing, but there are other honeys that increases pitta also. So if in a medicinal purposes, we can use it different type of honey, provided we should know the details. That's okay. yeah. Now, there is one honey which Sushruta clearly tells you can eat as much as you want. So if you really want to eat honey, hunt for Sushruta's honey that can be heated. I believe it's the Ardhya honey which is from Madhuka Pushpa. It's a monofloral honey. So which could also mean, that's the last question I want to ask. Since Sushruta says that the monofloral honey can be heated and in the West people are happily heating honey, maybe we can allow you to heat the more floral honeys. Is that uh, acceptable? Yes, yeah. you can warm it. I won't, I, won't, I won't use the word heating it because there may be substances which are volatile or which might get charred in the process of cooking or heating it beyond some degrees. But definitely if you know this source and if the source doesn't have a toxic ingredient in it, it may be allowed to warm the honey or you put it in warm water or hot water and drink it. drink it and all these things are possible I believe. So you can see the text has anticipated in almost all situations of honey. Almost. No. We give them some excuses 3000 years ago. <laughs> but they are still very modern. They are they focused only on the principles of what, how to assess honey, what parameters we must use, what are the sources. So this is the universality of Ayurveda. And you know, there are some unresolved debates and that's always there in science. And that's what makes Ayurveda also interesting, that they keep many things open for further discussion. So to conclude, we are almost, uh, you know, nearing the final moments of this debate, debate and discussion. And I'm very happy that it was not very violent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, so what we have concluded, I think, is that honey is not one substance. And the medicinal honey is very different from the different types of honeys that we see around. So that's one major takeaway message. That if we want to use, because the honey in Ayurveda, which is kapha haran, the best medicine for kapha, is not just any honey out there. So unless you are choosy, you look at the parameters, you cannot use honey in medicine. So honey as food, we have to be careful there also. It doesn't mean that you can just gobble all the honey that you see. You have to be a bit careful because uh, uh, the ama of honey is even more dangerous than ama of rice or wheat or any other food that you eat. So generally honey is not to be taken in very large quantities. It has to be, you know, in very small quantities and Suitably, it's used as a, a you know, anu, I mean, sahapana or as a prakshepa. This is where we see honey being used along with other substances. So while it exerts its own action, it also, you know, facilitates the activity of other substances. And to answer uh, and conclude this session, Siddha Mantra was a very interesting textbook in the 13th century. And Siddha Mantra was the first textbook to take up this debate. Vadalam charago burude, vadakhanam vashti sushruta, karanadir vadatyanne dityukte ratra nirnaya. So he says, Charaka says it's increasing vata, Nambi. Nambi says. And Vijit Sushruta says that it is Tridosha Hara. And Karanada, who's not here, I'm not Karanada. Karanada means a very rough voice. I believe I don't have such a rough voice. So Karanada is not here, he says something else. And Siddha Mandara tries to resolve. And Siddha Mantra, this textbook, introduced a new theory called Udasina. Udasina means inert. That honey is inert when it comes to water. It can neither increase nor decrease. And that is why there is a confusion. There's actually no contradiction. So to, uh, the, to conclude, 
I think we can use, still use Sushruta's classification. And I beg Nambi's pardon here. I would recommend Sushruta's <laughs> classification. To, classification is good. That's what Nambi says. <laughs> So, Sushruta's classification, Charaga's insights, and I think we can make better use of the rich varieties of honeys that are available world over. So, thank you very much. I would like to thank Mark and Kirsten for this opportunity. <laughs> to